Hi all. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. My name is Amira and my channel is all about trying new makeup, talking about new makeup, but also finding new and exciting ways to be inspired by the makeup you already own. If that sounds good to you, I hope you will consider subscribing and if you enjoyed today's video, hitting the like button. Today guys, I am talking all about the new Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes and the lipsticks. I purchased two of the palettes and one of the lipsticks right here. Here are the palettes and the lipstick. Let's get into it. All right, so first up, let me show you which palettes I actually got. So I got Vega, of course. I feel like everyone got Vega because it's beautiful. It's different, it's cool toned. I love this cool tone palette. So this is what the packaging looks like. This is what the palette looks like. I'm gonna give you a spoiler alert. I have used this already. I wanted to kind of have a, a have some sort of opinion form before I got on camera for you guys. And then Sorcery, which I have not tried. I held off on Sorcery so we could try it together on camera. So let me pull that baby out. Um, I will say, I love the look of the packaging. The pack, the look of it is absolutely stunning. So this is Sorcery. Um, but, the filling of these is actually quite light. Like they feel quite, like the the look of them is quite luxe, but they're quite, they're plastic and they're quite lightweight. I would say, I wish that it had a little bit more heft to it, especially for the price point. I think, you know, at, at such a luxury price point, I would hope that the packaging would sort of give that feeling. It definitely gives the look but I don't necessarily think it gives the feeling like in the hand, like in the hand, it doesn't feel luxurious if, if you know what I mean. Now the lipsticks feel very luxurious and they're very heavy. Um, although I will say this one feels a little bit lighter than the other ones that I felt. Let me grab an old one and let me see if they, they weigh. So I'm holding both in my hand. So this is an older one. This is Velvet Myth and this is Velvet Sorcery. I would say the magnet of this is a little bit heavier and you can feel like you can feel this is lighter. This is lighter than the older packaging just by like a smidge. And I wouldn't have noticed it had I not been using my other Lisa Eldridge lipsticks a ton recently. I've been wearing a Lisa Eldridge lipstick pretty much every day for the past like two weeks. So I've been carrying one of these in my purse pretty much every day. And so I'm noticing that yes, the packaging, this is the old, this is the new. This is lighter. So even even the lipsticks don't feel quite as hefty as they used to, which is kind of kind of a bummer for me. I mean, there might be a reason for that. Maybe it's, you know, materials and all that type of thing. I prefer the filling of the old ones. It feels just a little bit more substantial. But yeah, so that's my one, I would say my one issue that I had with the packaging upon opening is that I felt that it's a little for $68, this is a little, you know, and I'm, I'm someone who loves like Pat McGrath packaging, you know, the, the motherships are 120, I think they've gone up, I think they're 128 now. And they feel, when you open them up, they feel substantial. Like it feels like you've got $125 worth of a palette, you know, because they're heavy, the, the embossing, everything feels very luxurious. These are 68 a pop and they don't feel luxurious when you, when you open them, when you touch them in your hand, you know, hold them in your hand. So that's my only like gripe that I've had. So let's start off with Vega and I'm going to do some quick swatches for you guys. Um, I did use Vega, um, for the first time a couple of days ago when it, when I first got the, the items, because I really wanted to get a feel for them before I went on camera so that I can tell you guys a little bit more. We'll do a first impression with sorcery, but I wanted to have some, some sort of feedback for you right off the bat. So Vega comes with six shades, um, French gray, which is ca called a velvet. Then you have smokeless, I'm sorry, smoke and mirrors, which is a seamless matte moon swirl, a metallic turbulence, a seamless matte supernova, a luminous, and Lamp Black, a seamless matte. So French Gray is the, I guess, considered the cream to powder in the palette. Um, let me get that open. I don't know why I closed it because I'm going to need it. So this is what it looks like. It's very cool toned. 
Then I'm going to do Smoke and Mirrors. Smoke and Mirrors is actually quite creamy as well. And you can see it has a lot of pigment to it. Moon Swirl, which is the metallic. Beautiful. Wipe my hands off here. Turbulence, which is sort of this like cool toned taupey shade. And this is a seamless matte, similar to Smoke and Mirrors. Same formula. That was a terrible swatch and that is not the shadow's fault. That is my fault. That's better. All right, and then we have Supernova, which is a luminous. It is the only luminous shade in this palette. So they're two um, sort of metallic formulas, but they're different from each other. So let's put this here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Very beautiful. And then finally we have Lamp Black. And I will swatch that and try not to get shimmer in it because... And this is one of the seamless mattes. And the seamless mattes feel quite creamy. None of these feel powdery. None of the mattes are powdery. So if you're looking for like a traditional powder formulation, you're not going to find it in this palette. Um, I used this and the thing that I, the first time I used it, the first thing I was shocked by was that I thought it would be more pigmented immediately um, upon immediate application and it wasn't. But what I enjoyed was that these mattes layered and built on top of each other so seamlessly so beautifully that I didn't mind that I wasn't getting like pigment you know pigment right away it felt very it's a very elegant they're very elegant formulas you know they're not um you're not going to get that sort of indie brand pow 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 with this palette but what you're going to get is shades that are very user user friendly that are very layer layerable that layer well on top of each other and that you can sort of interchangeably apply to the eye because I used all of the shades on the eye and the look was very beautiful and very seamless so let me I'm gonna go off camera and do one eye and then I'm gonna come back on camera and we'll do that eye together I just want to decide what I want to do before before I come back I'll be back guys I am back do you ever have those days where you feel like you forgot how to do makeup? I am having one of those days because this simple eye I was on the struggle bus with and I don't know why. It wasn't the shadows. It was me. It wasn't the shadows, I swear. Um, so this is the look. I just did like a really simple halo eye. I was going for something a bit more intense, but again, my, my skill set today has failed me. And so I just decided to go simple. But I actually really like this because I've incorporated every shade except for um, French Gray um, on the eye here. So you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to do the look on this eye as well. And I will sort of talk you through, um, you know, what I what I came up with. Um, in my, my desperation to get a decent eye look. Okay, so the first thing I did was go in with Turbulence, which is this shade here. And I'm going to zoom you guys in. Hello, hello. So I took this and I applied this all in my crease. And you will see from these shades that they are incredibly soft. Um, I will say I am struggling to sort of find the right brush to use with this formula. It kind of reminds me a bit, not of the Natasha Denona cream to powder, but of the... Um, the Nabla cream to powder formula or the cream um, shadow formula. They're very similar in that they're a bit, um, they're very creamy, but they're also almost a bit dry. They're not crumbly, but I just feel like, really, sir, are you trying to leave? Okay, well, hold on. So rude. But they do, they don't, the thing that I will say about these that's different from the Natasha Denona ones is that when Natasha Denona's cream to powder, you kind of get like pigment right away. It's just like pigment. And with this formula, you really do kind of have to work with it a little bit, which I don't mind, but I just wanted to, to note that. All right, now I'm going to use the same brush and I'm, by the way, I'm using a Sonia G mini booster and I'm going to go into smoke and mirrors. And I taking that on the outer corner here. And again, like I said, I feel that these build really nicely on top of each other. 
I'm taking it in the inner corner and building that up. Yeah, I just really went with a simple yellow eye, which is, you know, that's fine. It works. Okay, my brush up a little bit, and I'm going to go back into turbulence just to sort of marry these edges a bit here. I then took my finger and I used the shade Moon Swirl, which is the metallic, the one metallic in the palette. I'm going to bring that one up more too. Yeah, there we go. Look, I like that. The metallic going past the matte. It's very pretty and it gives some dimension to the eye. All right. Very nice, very nice. I'm going to take that shade again. Um, Smoke and mirrors just to blend these edges out. Like so. Very good, very good. I then took a teeny tiny rougher number 23 and I dipped into lamp black. And I took that along my lash line. And this is incredibly pigmented and creamy, so go in with a light hand. I say that with all blacks, but I'm going to tell you that with this black specifically because it is very pigmented. I took it under here. I'm going slowly building that up because I don't want like a mess on my hands, you know? Bring that over a little bit more. Like that. And then I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush. So this is a Kelly, this is a Coyoto brush. I don't know which number that is, but I'm gonna take smoke and mirrors. That there like so I'm gonna wipe it off take a little bit of turbulence here like so I then took the luminous shade supernova with the same brush I'm not wetting anything so you guys can really see how these perform on their own as you can see, they're actually quite much like this is a dry brush. Then I'm going to take some more of Moon Swirl and apply that here. And then at the last minute, what I did just to deepen this corner, as you can see, this is a little bit deeper. I went into, I dip dab dipped into Lamp Black just a little bit and added a little bit of that to this outer corner, just a little bit. just to deepen it just a little bit more so that it's not it's got some dimension to it i'm gonna add my mascara and i'll be back i'm should i put the lip on now let's put sorcery on let me wipe my lip palm off excuse me my lips have been on the struggle bus as far as dryness goes. So I'm going to use my go-to BFF3 from ColourPop to line my lips. I did not get the corresponding lip pencil because I have a million nude and neutral lip liners. I do not need another one. Um, but I will say that um, if you don't have a million of them, the least Eldridge lip liners are quite lovely. All right, so this is Sorcery. This is what it looks like. So Oh, I love a fresh Lisa Eldridge lipstick. Look how stunning that is. Oh, oh, oh. All right, so let me zoom you guys out so you can see the apply. Oh, oh is this the right liner for this? I don't know. Maybe not. Although I kind of like the darker line. Hmm. Okay. This is much pinker on me than I was expecting it to be. Yeah. Hmm. What do we think of the liner with this? Should I? I feel like I needed a different liner. I did not expect it to be this. Have this much of a pinky undertone on my skin tone. I don't know. I'm a little shocked by that. Do I love it or do I hate it? I don't know. The formula is a Lisa Eldridge formula. Like I wasn't expecting it to feel any differently. It's it's a matte but smooth formula like it's it's a fantastic formula. it's my favorite matte lipstick 
formula. Uh, so I wasn't expecting anything less from that. I'm just a bit shocked by the tone. I, I was expecting it to be a bit more neutral on me. Just judging by the models on her, um, where can I put this instead of there it is. But I guess it's my bad for not swatching it once I got it. But yeah, it's, it pulls a lot, very pink on me, like a lot of rosiness in the undertone on my skin tone. I was expecting this to be a bit more like a a deeper, richer version of like a fair, like a cool, like a, a brownier version of a fair. But it's actually reading on me like a slightly less pink version of Velvet Blush, which is quite pink on me. Interesting. I have to feel. I have to. I have to think on this lipstick because I don't think that I the color. I don't know if I love it or hate it on me. You guys tell me in the comments what you think of this color on me. I don't know how I feel about it. But the eyes I actually really love. So let's talk about this palette specifically before we get move on to sorcery because they're very different as far as the form the 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 way they're composed as far as what kinds of shadows you get in them. So they're not gonna be exactly the same. So I do feel with these formulations, there's a bit of a learning curve. And I say this as someone who loves cream to powder formulas. You know how I feel about the Natasha Denona cream to powder formula. It's one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas on the market, period. Not just Natasha, it's just on the market. I love that formula. These feel like a slightly less pigmented, a slightly drier version of that, which kind of reminds me of the Nabla sort of cream powder formulation, which also had a learning, has a learning curve for me. I don't dislike using it, it's just that I have to sort of tweak how I apply it or how I, how I approach it. With the Natasha Denona, I know that I can just go, I can dip in with one dip and I will get a lot of pigment on my brush, especially when I'm using a natural hair brush. With these, they do take some building up and I'm still using natural hair brushes. But this makes sense to me in the, in the sense of how Lisa approaches makeup. Her, she, she tends to go very much, she's all about the layering of shades and the light building up of shades. She is not like a boom pigment, pigment type of gal, you know what I mean? So that doesn't shock me that that is the formulation. It's just for me personally being someone who's sort of used to those type of shadows and I know how to work with those like I'm really good at working with those type of shadows I have had to figure out how to navigate and understand that I'm going to be sitting here I'm going to be building up for a little bit but not as you can see it didn't take me that long to build it up it wasn't like I was here for days blending my eyeshadow out I wasn't so for me this feels like a, a you guys know that the this this the five pan from Pat McGrath, the little the little five pan that she came out the holiday collection is one of my the my fave palettes that I've tried. I mean, just spoiler alert, I am gonna be ranking all the eyeshadow palettes I've tried, and that one is gonna be pretty high up on the list. This for me feels more like I think what some people were expecting that one to be, because I think with that sort of charcoaly black and gray, people were expecting a more cool tone palette. But that palette is actually quite warm, and that's really the only like cool shade in the palette whereas this to me this is a cool tone palette I mean look at this color story this is cool this is cool like you're getting cool tones and I like that I like that it's a cool toned truly cool toned palette the metallics in this are stunning as you guys saw um I did not have to wet these to get that kind of pay the payoff that I got and I think these on the eye with just maybe turbulence or French gray. French gray goes really gray on me I will tell you that as you saw in the swatches it's very light on me. I used this and it was fine but I think that if I'm going to use these metallics on their own I probably would just go on with go in with turbulence in my crease and then apply these all over the lid. Um, yeah I just I think French gray is it's gonna work a little bit better for lighter skin tones. That well, it won't pull as as white based as it does on me. I don't hate the shade. It's just not. It's a shade that I would probably use as a shade, as a base shade, and then layer something over it. I wouldn't just go into my going as a crease shade with that. It just wouldn't. It wouldn't be the biz. You know what I mean on me. Well, um, I'm gonna try. We're gonna try and go a bit more dramatic with sorcery because I mean, we have to, right? So let me remove this and we will get into All right, guys sorcery. I am back and this is the first eye with sorcery I decided to go ahead and just sit down and play with it a little bit 
I'm quite happy with this. Um, I wanted something like really impactful and just like slapping all of these beautiful metallics on my eye. And I've used every single shade in this little palette. And I am I actually like the sort of like jewel toned grunginess of it all. I did a bit of a reverse, you know, wing there, a little under wing. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. But let me swatch these for you guys. So first up is the only matte in the palette, which is Troubadour, which is this stunning sort of teal. Do a better swatch, Amira. That's a terrible swatch. This stunning sort of teal. And my fingers are like literally prone from swatching and wiping my hands and doing things. So uh, the swatches may not be their best, but that is Troubadour. I use that on my lower lash line. It is stunning it is so beautiful so creamy and i'm gonna get into that as well because i have i have a thought about that next up is grotto which is the green metallic once again my swatches are so stunning and then the gold in the palette which is madrigal and this is a metallic as well beautiful we then have Mercurial, which is a luminous duo. So it is have shift. Oh, look at that. That shade is. That one is a sleeper. I didn't realize I was going to enjoy that one as much as I did when I when I applied it. Next up is Maj, which is a metallic. Let's see if you can see that better. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. And then finally, we have Swan Song, which is the beautiful beautiful blue in the palette so that is sorcery now let me get into the look and we'll talk about my experience doing this eye so the first thing I did was go in with grotto and I literally just took my finger and I applied my I use my finger for the majority of these shades guys um, on the lid I wanted to do that. Um, I saw Lisa do that and I was like, I want to do that. I want to apply these with my finger on my lid. Let me zoom you guys in a little bit more as well. So I went, started with this one, which is Grotto the Green. And then and I'm going to wipe my finger off because I swatched so I know I have shades all over and I don't want them to get muddy in my eye. I then went in with Madrigal. Which, I'm not going to lie, every time I hear that I say this name, I think of Encanto. Am I the only one? I know I'm not the only one. I start humming, We are the family, Madrigal. Oh my god, let me stop. But yeah, that's what I think of. That is beautiful. And then I went in with um, Mercurial, and I was like, well, let me see what this looks like next to it. And I was just like, oh, it's stunning is what it is next to it. And that's what's there. That you see, all of this is mercurial. So stunning. I'm gonna see if I can blend it a little bit better this time, or as well as I did on that eye, on this eye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is one of the reasons why it's like when you use your fingers, it's like it can be a bit of a crapshoot. Not gonna lie, be a bit of a crapshoot, especially when you have, you know, talons. When my nails are short, it's much easier. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of Maj, which is what I used in this area here. And I brought it up, up, up to this area. And again, I'm not wetting any of these shades. I'm just applying them as they, as they are. And then I'm gonna take my number 23 and I'm gonna dip into Troubadour. And I'm gonna do my little reverse wing. Hopefully it goes well. Mm. Mm. Bring that all the way under. This one's a little bit thicker, but Alright. 
and I'm lightly blending that over here. And then I took Swan Song, which is the beautiful blue metallic. And I apply that right here over this area. And then I took Mercurial and applied that in my inner corner. Like so. And then I'm going to take a bit more of Troubadour. Same brush. I'm using the same brush for all of these because it's so small and so great for this type of thing. And I'm going to just apply that along my lash line. And I just do this when I'm wearing metallics because I feel like it just grounds the look a little bit to have a little bit of darkness along the lash line. At least on me. Other people, it doesn't, you know, it may not matter. But on me, I feel like it just helps ground it a bit. Okay. And take my concealer brush and just do a little bit of that. There we go. And mascara. If I could find it, I don't know where I did with it. Hold. All right, guys, I am back. I have applied mascara to this eye, and let's get into my feelings on sorcery because my feelings on sorcery are different from my feelings on Vega. First off, the seamless matte troubadour in this one is much more pigmented and creamier than the others feel in Vega. This one reminded me very much, actually, of a Natasha Denona cream to powder. In fact, it reminded me of the teal cream to powder that is in the Metropolis palette. It's very similar in texture, very similar in pigmentation, very similar in the way that it performed. So that's interesting. Um, I th so that leads me to believe that the formulation for these it really does depend on the tone and the shade, which kind of makes sense because that's how pigment works you know shades aren't all gonna risk going to apply um and blend the same way depending on what the pigmentation is teals do tend to be richer you know and more pigmented just by the tone so it makes sense that the this one is more pigmented however the texture is also i think a little creamier and a little easier to apply and to blend with um as far as the metallics i wanted grotto to be a bit more have a bit more base to it but i'm not surprised that it doesn't like I, it, I wasn't like oh it's just that most green metallics kind of kind of apply like that which i'm always looking for a really rich deep green throughout most green metallics have that like blackened base which if you blend it out it kind of just turns to like black with a little bit of green Grotto isn't exactly like that, but as you can see, it kind of is. Like, it does still have that blackened base, and I was just hoping for a bit more richness, sort of similar to what we get with Madrigal. I was hoping it would be a bit more like that. I still think it's beautiful, but I do think that the standouts in these is it surprisingly isn't the green shadow in here. It is the other metallic, so it is Madrigal stunning. Mercurial is a low-key banger in this palette i was shocked at how much i love this swan song is stunning and i can't wait to apply this all over my eye mash is fine it's a silver um i knew that this wasn't going to be the one that i loved because i'm not a huge silver person but it's still really pretty and it has this sort of do you see what i'm like a greeny undertone to it almost it's almost like if you took a metallic if you took a like greeny bronze and you turned the warmth down to like minim minimal this is what you would get you would get like a greeny silver tone almost does you, you you get what i mean by that so that's what i'm getting from this so i don't hate it but it's not like my favorite in the palette but i do i do see its place in the palette because of that beautiful sort of like almost green base um yeah so i I would say of the two, I would say Sorcery, surprisingly, even though it's the brightest of all of the palettes that she came out with, and I believe she came out with five, of them, I would say that source of the two that I own, surprisingly, Sorcery is the most user-friendly, which is shocking. You would think it would be, you think it would be Vega. I think Sorcery is easier to, to work with. And maybe that's just me because I'm used to working with these type of formulations, and Fe Vega has a little bit more... Um, interesting things going on or newer things going on so I'm not as 
as like versed in that as I am with with something like sorcery but for me just applying them I feel that sorcery was easier to use for me um other than that just to give you guys some I mean I'm sure you've seen other reviews on these um it took forever for me to get my my package so I'm a bit on the late freight and then I was working so I got it and I played with it on my own but I didn't have a chance to sit down and film with them so my my reviews may be a bit on the late side but I'm still putting it up because you know if you're watching me I would hope you would want to know my thoughts on them so the thing that I do find really cool about these is that all of these all of these shades are removable and interchangeable so you can take these out and you can mix them together and I might do that with Vega I might see if I can come up this is so warm jewel toned and this is so cool toned so I don't know if I would be able to mix the two per se but I'm willing to give it a shot just to see you know um but I've seen people mix like their myth and vega though those two work beautifully together but it's also because they're both more on the cool tone side um you have to buy one of these if you want to be able to enter you know to have a palette to put them in you can buy all of the shades individually which I think is amazing but you know you can't unless you have your own magnetic palette that you, and if you do that's fine but if you want to use them in an actual Lisa Eldridge palette you would have to buy one of her already pre-made palettes in order to do so she doesn't sell empty palettes and I know that's some people have seen that as a drawback I'm not really surprised by that I, I think you know she's trying to sell palettes and she's trying to make the palettes as user friendly as possible but also as a makeup artist, I think she was trying to, you know, um, that's the way that they, that she uses shadows, I'm sure, is interchangeably. And so that was in her, for her mind. But she's also a brand and she's trying to sell palettes. You know what I mean? So I'm not surprised that she has it. And maybe eventually she will sell just these empty. That would be cool. They're probably going to be on the expensive side. So, think, so keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, do I think these are worth $68? This is so hard for me when I have to do this whole is it worth it thing when it comes to higher end makeup because there's always the argument that it's never worth it and then for me the argument is it's worth it if you enjoy the brand the formula and you don't mind the price point if you're willing to pay the money. I say if you are looking for palettes that are elegant in formula that are this is lightweight that you can travel with, that you can put in your purse, that you can use interchangeably. If you are looking for, you know, interesting formulations, then yes. If none of that matters to you, then no. Um, I don't necessarily feel that even with the unique, the more unique formulations, I don't even feel that they're that unique to the market that that's the deciding factor for spending $68 on a, on a palette. You know what I mean? Like I said, that formulation reminds me a lot of the Nabla formulation as far as the cream shadows. I think it's a bit better. I will say that. I think that formulation in Vega is better than the formulation that it's similar to, the Nabla one. I find the Nabla one to be harder to use. So take of that what you will. For me personally, I'm not upset that I purchased these. I have been, you know, I've, I'm enjoying using them, especially Sorcery. This is my first time using it and I had so much fun with it that I can't wait to play with it some more. So for me, I don't regret buying the palettes. I probably, of the three items that I purchased, I probably regret the lipstick more. And that's not because of formulation, because again, I love Lisa's formulation. It's my favorite matte lipstick formulation. It's a beautiful formula. I just, for me, sorcery on my skin tone pulls very pink. And I was not expecting that. And it's not exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for a deeper, richer, more neutral, nude type of shade, you know. So mm, I might regret that a bit. I don't know. I have to live with it a little bit more. I think I'm going to pair with a different lip liner. The lip liner I paired it with because I was expecting to be brownier. I paired it with my BFF3. I don't necessarily know if I like it with this lip liner. So I think I need to play with that a little bit more and sort of figure that out. Come back to you guys on the lipstick because again, I may just have to play with it a little bit. My makeup is a mess because I've been <laughs> rubbing, rubbing eye makeup off and then reapplying it. Um, but yeah, I, I have to, I think I'm going to have to live with it and play with it and use some different lip pencils with it to see how I get to form a final opinion about it. But 
if you like this tone and I think if you are of a lighter skin tone than me this will read far more brown on you but do you see what I mean how it looks a little bit browner and but uh once it's on my lips it's quite pink so yeah that's my only disappointment um other than that I'm quite happy with my purchase I love Lisa Eldridge she's one of my favorite makeup artists I think she's amazing and I am always interested in what she's putting out even if it's something that I'm not necessarily interested in buying I'm always interested in what she is doing because I find what she does to be so interesting and she's such a genuine lover of makeup a genuine lover of makeup artistry and history you channel watch some of her videos where she talks about make historical makeup and vintage makeup and her vintage makeup collection she collects like vintage makeup and you know like old school victorian stuff and she and she talks about it and it's so fascinating to listen to um so she's a true connoisseur of makeup and a true lover and it's always nice to sort of be on the to witness that sort of enthusiasm and that sort of expertise on a subject i love it but especially when it's a subject that i myself am interested in and that i like again the 68 dollars price point it's high i say if you're still unsure don't buy it I, and i feel that way about anything if you're not sure don't don't spend the money on it wait till you're sure they are permanent to her collection you have time to think about it they're not going anywhere you can decide for yourself. You can watch a bunch of reviews. You can decide which one is best for you. I would say do that. Um, but again, you don't need these. You don't absolutely need these to like complete your collection, if you know what I mean. All right, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit the like button, and I will see you in the next one. Bye now.